Lesson 20, Refraction and Snell's Law. Part 1, Refraction. A medium is the substance that the light wave is traveling through. A medium could be something like air, water, glass, or even diamond. When a light wave travels from one medium to another, the light ray bends at an angle. This is why objects in water appear to be bent at an angle from where they go in. The speed of light changes, the wavelength of the light changes, but the frequency of the light wave stays the same. The process that occurs when light travels from one medium to another is called refraction. When analyzing refraction, we draw a normal line, which is a line perpendicular to the boundary between the media. The angle of incidence is the angle between the normal line and the incident ray. The angle of refraction is the angle between the refracted ray and the normal line. The index of refraction is going to be given by the letter n in formulas. The index of refraction is the ratio between the velocity of the light in the first medium and the velocity of the light in the second medium. The formula that we use to calculate the index of refraction is n equals c over cm, where c is the normal speed of light This is the accepted 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second value. And cm is the speed of light in the medium. For example, if we're looking for the index of refraction in water, we use n equals c over cm, where c is the regular speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, divided by the speed of light in the medium, which is water, 2.26 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. This gives an n value for water equal to 1.33. The bigger the index of refraction, the slower the medium. The index of refraction for air is 1. For water, it's 1.33. For glass, it's 1.52, and for diamond, it's 2.42. Faster mediums are ones that have index of refraction closer to 1. Slower mediums are the ones that have bigger indices of refraction. We can use our knowledge of whether a medium is a fast or slow medium to predict how light will bend as it refracts. We start with the acronym FST which you can remember using freaky science teachers. F stands for fast, S stands for slow, and T stands for towards. So if light comes from a fast medium going to a slow medium, it will bend towards the normal. F, S, T. Here's an example. Going from water, which is a fast medium, to glass, which is a slow medium, we know that light will bend F, S, T. So it's going to bend towards the normal line. We'll start by drawing in normal line. When a light ray comes in towards the boundary between the two media, it will bend towards the normal line. So here is the original path, and we know that the light ray is going to bend in a direction towards the normal line. The next acronym to remember is SFA. We can remember this as Sue Farts a lot. This stands for going from slow medium to fast medium. The light ray will bend away from the normal.
So if we're going from diamond to glass, diamond is a very slow medium and glass is a faster medium. We'll start by drawing in the normal line, which is perpendicular to the boundary between the two media. And we draw a light ray come in towards this boundary. Here's the original pathway of the light ray. And since it's traveling from a slow to fast media, it's going to refract away from the normal line. So it refracts away from its original path. S, F, A. Different colors can have different indices of refraction in some materials. For example, in some types of glass, violet has an index of refraction equal to 1.53, whereas red has an index of refraction equal to 1.51. This is how a prism produces a rainbow. As white light hits the prism, each color refracts at a different angle. because each color has a different index of refraction and as a result the wavelengths are separated. This leads us to a very important rule that you have to memorize. Remember the following. For refraction, violet refracts the most. So if we have white light coming into a prism when the rainbow exits the prism, red will refract at an angle, but at much less of an angle than the higher energy wavelengths, like blue and violet. For diffraction, red diffracts the most. So if we have a diffraction grating, and white light travels in and hits the diffraction grating, we will see red light diffract at a much greater angle than the higher energy wavelengths such as blue and violet. So for refraction, red will refract the least. And for diffraction, violet will diffract the least. Part two, Snell's Law. Snell's law allows us to calculate the change in angle, speed, and wavelength of light as it refracts when traveling from one medium to another. So if we have two different media, recall that the normal line is drawn perpendicular to the boundary between each medium. The incident ray is the ray that comes in to the boundary. This incident ray in medium one has a velocity and wavelength that are specific to that light frequency in medium one. It comes at an angle we'll call theta one. This is the angle between the normal line and the incident ray. As it crosses over the boundary, it will refract. The refracted ray has a different velocity, we'll call v2, and wavelength, which we'll call lambda two, and it refracts at a different angle than it entered with. The formula for Snell's law uses these three quantities, sine theta one over sine theta two equals n two over n one equals v one over v two equals lambda one over lambda two. It's kind of like four formulas in one. When using Snell's law, remember that the angles are measured between the normal line and the ray. Example, what is the angle of refraction for the light ray traveling from water to glass shown below? Snell's law says that sine theta one over sine theta two equals n two over n one equals v one over v two equals lambda one over lambda two. We only need to use the part of this formula that we're given in the question. We're given the indices of refraction, the n values, and we're given the original angle of the light before it's refracted. 
For this reason, we only need the section of the formula that includes the angles and the end values. So we use sine theta 1 over sine theta 2 equals n2 over n1. Theta 1 is given, this is the angle in the first region. This is 70 degrees. N2 is given, this is the index of refraction in the second region, which is 1.5. N1 is also given, it's 1.33 in the first region. And we're asked to find theta 2. We can rearrange this version of Snell's law for theta 2. Theta 2 equals sine inverse n1 sine theta 1 over n2. This is sine inverse 1.33 times sine 70 divided by 1.5. This gives us a theta 2 value equal to 56 degrees. We can continue this to a second example. If the incident ray in the last example is traveling at 2.26 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, what is the speed of light in glass? For this example, we use the next part of Snell's law. n2 over n1 equals v1 over v2. In this case, we use the n2 value of 1.5. This is the index of refraction in the second region. In the first region, the n value is 1.33. The incident ray is region 1, and this is the velocity of 2.26 times 10 to the 8 meters per second in the first region. This allows us to solve for v2. v2 equals v1 n1 over n2. This is 2.26 times 10 to the 8 times 1.33 divided by 1.5. This gives us v2 equals 2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Another example. Light hits the air glass boundary at 15 degrees. Calculate the angle of refraction as light enters the water. In this example, we have light traveling from air to glass to water. In each case, the light refracts at an angle as it enters the new medium. We're going to refer to this region air as A, glass as G, and water as W. We'll start with Snell's law for the air to glass boundary. Sine theta air over sine theta glass equals n glass over n air equals v air over v glass equals lambda air over lambda glass. Since we're interested in the angle and we're given the indices of refraction, we only need to worry about the first part of Snell's law. Sine theta air over sine theta glass equals n glass over n air. We can rearrange this to find the angle of refraction in the glass. Theta glass equals sine inverse sine theta a times n a divided by n g. This gives us the angle of refraction in the glass equal to 9.93588 degrees. We know this angle theta the glass, but it's also equal to this angle, theta glass, as it hits the glass to water barrier. Theta glass equals 
9.93588 degrees. As it moves from glass to water, we can use sine theta glass over sine theta water equals index of refraction in water divided by index of refraction in glass. And rearrange this to find theta w. Theta w equals sine inverse sine theta glass times n glass divided by n water. This gives us a theta in the water equal to 11.2 degrees. There is a faster method that could be used to calculate the angle when you've got three different interfaces. If we had just pretended the glass was not there at all, we could have just calculated air to water. Sine theta air over sine theta water equals n water over n air. If we arrange this for theta water, this is sine inverse sine theta air times n air divided by n water. This is sine negative 1 of sine 15 times the n for air which is 1 divided by the n for water which is 1.33 and if you do this this also equals 11.2 degrees. So we, if we have three different media, we can just ignore the me middle media if we want to find the final resulting angle of refraction. Part 3, Total Internal Reflection. If you look at a body of water, such as a lake, sometimes you can see through the water to see the bottom of the lake. Sometimes you can't and the lake reflects light just like a mirror. This is because of total internal reflection. When you're going from a slow medium to a fast medium, we use the acronym SFA. This means that you go from a slow medium to a fast medium, and light refracts away from the normal line. For example, when light enters the air from the water in a lake, we're going from a slow medium to a fast medium, so we know the light will refract away. So if we have an incident light ray hitting the boundary, the angle of incidence is between the light ray and the normal line. We can draw a dotted line showing the path that it would have taken if it hadn't been refracted. Since it's refracted, we know it's going to refract away from the normal line. So theta r is going to be larger than theta i. As the angle of incidence increases, the refracted ray gets closer and closer to the water surface. So as the angle of incidence increases and gets bigger and bigger, the angle of refraction also must get bigger and the refracted ray gets closer and closer to the surface of the water. Eventually we would reach an angle of incidence that would result in an angle of refraction up exactly 90 degrees. This angle of incidence that results in a 90 degree angle of refraction is called the critical angle. When this angle is reached, all angles of incidence greater than the critical angle will result in what's called total internal reflection. This picture of a lake is a great example of total internal reflection. For viewing angles less than the critical angle, we can see the bottom of the lake. This is because the light from the bottom of the lake is able to be refracted when you're viewing from that angle. But at the point of the critical angle, theta c, all angles for viewing the water beyond that result in total internal reflection. And as a result, the lake appears like a mirror, and you can't see the bottom of the lake through the water. Total internal reflection happens for any angle of incidence greater than the critical angle. At this critical angle, theta c, 
the angle of refraction is equal to 90 degrees. As a result, a viewer in the second medium won't see anything from inside the incident medium. Light inside the incident medium is reflected from the boundary. No light gets through the boundary between water and air. And as a result, instead, it is reflected inside the medium. This is why it's called total internal reflection. Total internal reflection will only happen when light travels from a slower medium to a faster medium. We can calculate the critical angle using Snell's law. N2 over N1 equals sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. The critical angle is the incident angle. When the incident angle is greater or equal to the critical angle, it results in a refracted angle of 90 degrees. Sine of 90 is equal to 1. So, N2 over N1 equals sine of the critical angle divided by 1. This means theta c equals inverse sine n2 over n1. For example, when light travels from diamond n equals 2.42 to air where n is 1, what is the critical angle for diamond? We have n2 over n1 equals sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. So the second region is air. The first region is the diamond. We're looking at an angle of refraction of 90 degrees when we reach the critical angle. So we have n2 over n1 equals sine of the critical angle, theta c, divided by sine of 90, which is equal to 1. Critical angle is sine negative 1, n2 over n1, which is sine negative 1, air, which is 1, divided by diamond, which is 2.46, this gives us a critical angle equal to 24.4 degrees, which is why diamonds are so sparkly, because they're very reflective.